This is Bendy, who is about to complete B-Type level 19-5, the hardest challenge in Ennius Tetris, with the DAS playstyle. Oh yes! Oh yes! Our server first seen by Bendy! There's a reason why he had this reaction. This is one of the most absurd achievements in the decades long history of the game. In this video, I'll be breaking down why it was so absurd and be interviewing Bendy himself about how he got it. So in Tetris for the NES, which originally came out in 1989, there are two different game types to play on. A-type is the more commonly known one, where you play for a high score until the game gets too fast or the board reaches the top of the screen. This is what's played in the classic Tetris World Championships. But B-type is more specific. It's a training mode where you have to clear 25 lines on top of a predetermined height of garbage. There are six different heights you can choose from, ranging from height zero, which as you can probably guess is zero lines of garbage, up to height five which is 12 lines of garbage. And you can choose any starting speed from level 0, which is the slowest, to level 19, which is the fastest. The B-type modes are named in the format of level speed first, then garbage height after. So the hardest possible mode is level 19, height 5, or 19-5. Now for most of the game's history, almost nobody ever attempted this mode, and for good reason. When you hold down the buttons of a controller to move pieces in the game, the first movement is instant, but then there's a delay of 16 frames before the auto shift kicks in. After this, the piece moves once every six frames. Playing with the built-in piece movement is known as playing with the delayed auto shift, or DAS. If you get in perfect rhythm with the game, you can actually bypass the delay and get it down to six frames along with the rest of the movement. This is called having loaded DAS. But here's the problem once you get to level 19. The speed is so fast that even with perfect DAS, there's only time to get pieces about halfway up the sides of the board. And this is even more difficult to do on the left side since the pieces have an initial spin bias towards the right. The crucial line piece can only get up six rows high maximum. And remember, the garbage of 19.5 is twice that height, so this is clearly impossible, right? The one thing that gives even a smidgen of hope for clearing this with DAS is that the level speed doesn't kick in until the second piece, so you can place the first piece anywhere. But unfortunately, there's actually a quirk in the game's code that makes it so the topmost left unit of garbage is always empty. So this means the player is basically forced every time to place their first piece on the left to plug the hole, otherwise there will be no chance of getting any pieces over. And then they have to navigate whatever mess is in the center, but there's literally no margin for error. One bad piece or misdrop and the game is instantly over. Now there is one way to overcome this limitation by manually tapping every movement faster than DAS. This is known as hyper tapping, but in order for it to be an advantage, you have to be able to tap your finger at over 11 times a second, which most people can't do. So despite NES Tetris receiving a huge surge in popularity over the past decade due to the success of the World Championships, for the longest time, the only whisper of anyone completing 19.5 was an urban legend that one of the rare early hypertappers, Thor Ackerland, had done it unrecorded. It wasn't until 2019 that Mark Meyer, one of the two fastest classic Tetris hypertappers in the world at the time, finally managed to do it on camera. There's a pretty sweet end screen when you complete it too. You see a bunch of iconic Nintendo characters such as Bowser, Mario, Donkey Kong, and Link, and St. Basil's Cathedral blasts off into the stratosphere. I actually made a video about Mark's completion of 19.5 at the time and interviewed him about how long it took him to get it. And the answer was pretty shocking. The short answer is uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> Since then, there's been even more innovation in the scene with the development of rolling, a faster way to hypertap by strumming fingers on the back of the controller into a finger on the front. And 19.5 is actually used as a practice mode by many players when learning the rolling playstyle. However, there remained a fascination in the scene if anybody would ever be able to eventually clear 19.5 with DAS, because it was the playstyle that virtually all of the classic Tetris scene's original stars use, and it still had tons of fans who enjoyed seeing how players would creatively play within the limitations, as shown by the turnout for last year's DAS World Championships. Adam, set up for Tetris! Set this readiness for Adam! Oh my goodness! Oh, 
In a nutshell, it's just cool to see people do things that are extremely hard. And a 19.5 completion of DAS would of course be by far the hardest playstyle to complete it with. The prospects of it happening were really dubious though. For example, Tristop, one of the best DAS players in the scene, spent dozens of hours over the course of a month to get the first ever 1.3 million score with DAS on A-Type. I got it! I got it! I got it! I got it! Afterwards, he set his sights on a DAS completion of 19.5, but quit after just two days, with his best attempt not even getting 10 lines in. Oh my gosh! Nine lines, holy crap, I choked that really hard. The reason why this is such a miserable grind for anyone who attempts it is that the hardest part is right at the start. Almost every attempt won't even get past one or two lines, meaning you don't really get to play the game. You just have to sit there spamming attempts, hoping that someday you'll get the miracle game where it all works out, and you have no idea how long it'll take. But then a player named Bendy would come along. So Bendy, how did you first get introduced to NES Tetris? Uh, I first got introduced in the CTWC 2018 semifinals and 2019 Tiosa vs. Green Tea and then your videos popped in my recommendations and the 19.5 one was one of the first ones I saw. So then when did you first start playing NES Tetris? I remember I first started like the beginning of 2021. My first like recorded PB wasn't until the end of the summer. Wow. Uh, so you've been playing about two years then? Yeah, but I wasn't super serious. August of 2021 is when I started playing seriously. Of course, one of the most impressive things about everything you've done. How old were you when you first started playing? Yeah, I was a little over 10 when I started. How did you originally decide to go for a DAS 19.5? It's a bit of a funny story. I remember there was a Mari stream and I just joined the VC and T-Storm was in it. And after Mari had left and finished streaming, we were talking. And he was like, if you beat 19.5 with any playstyle, I'll write 19.5. So I started going for it right there and then. And I'm like, nah, I, I can't do this. And I, and I only played like 10 minutes. But then Lapis commented on my 18.6 video, said, time to do 19.5. I was like, okay. So it seems possible. And then I started going for it and I just got it. How long did it take you to get it? So you mentioned you had like one day of 10 minutes of attempts. How many other days did you attempt it before you had the day where you got it? Uh, two days, like 90 minutes-ish. The first day of serious attempts, I had like 12 lines. And then I failed to do it due to a Miss Z to the right. It's only three taps, very easy. So that kind of made me think that there's a chance if I just had DAS fully loaded. So I think it was within a week I was expecting. I didn't think it would happen so fast. Yeah, but then also there's the side of it where I remember I got a lot of comments on the 19.5 video that, you know, Mark got it in 20 minutes famously. And people are like, oh, then it must have not been that hard. And the thing was, well, one, he got a little bit lucky that it happened that quickly. And then two, also, he did a lot of practice beforehand with all the other modes of NES Tetris, bringing up the skills to be even able to do it. So what do you think were some, uh, like, the critical skills or practice you did before attempting 19? five that gave you the ability to do it one thing is my almost 100 percent seven high or 10 high quick tap rate like i can get it like 90 percent of the time and mostly just in competition where i'm pressured to get out of these dicks because i used to play super aggressive i just grew the ability to quick tap really well to briefly explain what bendy means by a quick tap he's referring to an advanced technique where dash players take advantage of the instant first frame movement by pressing the button at the very end of a piece movement in addition to the beginning this gives the piece an extra burst of speed on the final movement it's still Still considered DAS and not hyper tapping because it doesn't require fast button mashing on consecutive movements, just really good timing. When you were doing these attempts, what were you looking for at the top of the board as a game that could possibly be a 19.5 completion? What I'm looking for is being able to gain access to the left. Even the first piece where you can always get to the left, it's not always enough because you could have like a seven long well and even if you got a bar to put in it it's still 12 high so you can't get anything so that's the main thing the other thing was being able to get clean access to the right with a t piece or s or a j that was useful to the stack 
In your game, were there any crucial moves during the run that you feel like made it possible for you to get the completion? The first really crucial move was the 10 high teeth piece to the right very early in the game. And that built out the right for the majority of the game. Then there's the 10 high Z piece quick tap where I had to get it over. If I didn't get it over, the run was just done. And I was waiting for a bar or I think a J, but I got a Z piece, so I just had to use what I got. In a more detailed breakdown, Spraggit Wang actually left a YouTube comment on Bendy's video pointing out every clutch quick tap move Bendy made throughout the game. Unfortunately, when Bendy's game was first posted around the community, there was a little bit of debate on the Tetris Discord servers over whether the game counted as the first DAS 19.5 because there was one suspicious move where Bendy appeared to have hyper tapped at 11 times per second. The fact that Bendy tapped actually isn't the primary issue. It's normal for games played with DAS to occasionally feature slow taps when a player isn't sure they have DAS control in a piece, such as this moment in my own first Max Out game where I got startled with three line pieces in a row and slow tapped the third one. Because most DAS players, such as myself, can't tap nearly as fast as fully loaded DAS, there's no real advantage gained by occasionally doing this. The problem is that Bendy's slow tap at an 11 times per second rate was accidentally faster than DAS. How would you explain what happened in that piece sequence? On the piece sequence, I had a seven high barrier on the left, so nothing can get over there cleanly without a quick tap. So the best move is I got a Z piece, so I quick tap that one. Then I got a T piece, which had to go right. But with that piece, the nerves were real because it was like 13 lines in. My heart was going 150, it felt like. And I think the jitteriness of me being nervous made it go faster than DAS. So what's the right call here? The community has no universal consensus on when slow tapping eventually just becomes hyper tapping, but the closest thing we have is the rule sets of major tournaments in the past that were exclusively played with DAS. In the rules for CT DAS, the biggest online DAS tournament, it's on the first page of the rules that what matters is not how fast the piece was tapped, but whether the move would have been possible with DAS. There's types of moves that are impossible with DAS, like 12 high right, which even with the quick tap is not possible, and if you hyper tap, it's obviously a tapping video. The difference with my move is that it was possible with DAS, and it wasn't even like close. It was seven high, right? Which is very easy, and I think it's possible even with not with no DAS, but with least possible DAS charge. What this ultimately means is that Bendy clearly wasn't attempting to cheat the playstyle. He did 100% of the hardest moves with DAS and quick taps. And the CT DAS lead organizer Scamper even chimed in during the conversation to confirm that Bendy's move would have been unambiguously allowed in the tournament. So in the view of the rule set, in my own view, yeah. It's a DAS game. Although the top tournaments and achievements in the game have come to be dominated by tappers and rollers in recent years, I find it really cool that there are still new young DAS players entering the scene and pushing the game and the playstyle to new heights. Now that you've done a DAS 19.5, do you have any other long-term goals or achievements in the game that you'd love to do? So there is this thing that I've done I haven't told very many people, but it's called Bendy's Mega Challenge, where I try to get every thousandth score, each one in a million. So there's like 1,000 games, and I'm trying to get every one of them. Right now I'm like 30% done. If you'd like to check out more of Bendy's play, be sure to subscribe to his YouTube channel, where he's already uploaded many crazy games, such as this clutchest 1.1 million score ever, which arguably actually isn't clickbait. No! Yes. <laughs> also, if you'd like to watch the original video I made about 19.5 three years ago, you can click on screen to check it out. Thanks for watching and see y'all next time.